The weather is warm and it's almost summer, but school is still in session in many places, and kids and their parents are dealing with the continuing challenges of distance learning. But while many students look forward to the break that will come from summer vacation, behind the scenes, administrators, teachers, and parents look ahead to what will happen to education in summer school and beyond. School districts are penciling in dates for when school will resume for the next semester and trying to figure out a plan that will keep everyone safe, healthy, and learning. But trying to anticipate all the possibilities and create a new learning environment is a massive undertaking. This week, we talk to some of the people involved in the process. Fox 11 News In Depth starts right now. Hello, everyone. I'm Hal Eisner. This past week, LAUSD Superintendent Austin Butner announced that the fall school semester in Los Angeles would begin August 18th. That's pretty close to the date that other local school districts are looking to open as well. But what is school going to look like come August and September? What becomes of summer school? Just a couple of the questions we have for our guest. Dr. Cuauhtémoc Avia is the superintendent of the Rialto Unified School District. Dr. Martin Rex Kedzia Kezora. You know, I, I, I know how to say that name. I, I want to call you Dr. K, though, if you'll let me do that during this show. And, and also, we have Melissa Neri, the president of the PTA at the Palm Middle School in Moreno Valley. First, I want to ask the superintendents to, to sort of help us out here to understand a little bit about what their life is like right now. Let's start with Dr. Avia. And let's start with, how's your family? How are you? Everybody okay? My personal family is doing well. They're sheltering in place as well. I have three daughters. They're all in college, so it's a little different for them uh, to learn from home. And I am doing well uh, personally, but as a superintendent, uh, it is a concert of emotions, uh, going from calm to anxiety to pressure to an exhilaration to try and make things work and make things happen for everybody who's impacted. Dr. Keziora, what, what about you? What, what's it like in your district in Moreno Valley? It's just like his district in Rialto. We have the same emotions and this, I echo the same things. You go from different feelings and different times. It's hour by hour, day by day. And uh, you're solving issues that take longer to solve. And uh, you wish they were quicker. And you wish you could help people sooner. But you take time because you have to really understand uh, what you're deciding and how you're doing it. And, and Melissa, I, I know uh, as a PTA president, you're you're really dealing with an entirely different issue. But do you at all interface with with superintendents as far as sort of what you as parents would like to see done in the schools? Schools. Most definitely. Uh, Dr. Kitsiera always makes himself available to us parents. So we have any opinions or issues, we either directly email him or text him because we do have his phone number. So he is very easily to get a hold of and let him know of issues that we're having. Dr. Avia, you and I have talked. We, we have a pretty good idea of some of the things you're discussing at behind closed doors about what school might look like. What might school look like come August? Well, it's not going to look the same as it was prior to the closure of schools for sure. And we're looking at staggered uh, bail schedules, staggered uh, return to school for different grade levels. We're looking at a combination of in-class instruction and distance learning, maybe an expansion of independent study, and just a, a, a variety of uh, ways that we're going to be able to or need to provide services to students. Because as we know, uh, the traditional school system, which was institutionalized for many, many years, uh, has finally been uh, kind of uh, rocked off its foundation. And so public schooling is gonna need to look different moving forward. How, how is the uh, distance learning going in your district? It's going well. The attitude of the uh, staff has been just phenomenal. It is a very close-knit community, and them willing to do whatever it takes to provide an education to our kids has just been phenomenal. Teachers, classified staff, uh, families, and administrators have just all stepped in to do what is best under the circumstances. So, yes, we've had some challenges, uh, but for the most part, our distance learning uh, efforts are going really well here. Dr. Kedziora, I, I want to know if you're looking at measures like instead of having kids eating in a lunchroom, when you eventually get back to the, the brick and mortar building, because you may start off this uh, fall semester with social learning, distance learning, and, and tell me if I'm right on that. But but would you be thinking about the idea of kids not going into a lunchroom, a cafeteria, and instead eating in their home room? 
that sort of thing. Well, there's every option is a possibility right now. We're still examining and looking and analyzing how this would look. Right now we have grab and go where students come every day and get their lunch and leave. And that's still an option for the fall or when we return to school uh, so that we, the biggest thing is making sure that students are safe and that we're protecting them from, uh, you know, anything that could, you know, happen. So uh, everything is an option and uh, we're, we're looking at everything and we're working with our teachers association our classified employees to make sure everyone is in this together. We sometimes say that uh, necessity is the mother of invention. And that has certainly been the case with the coronavirus because we've all had to figure out whether it's me on TV, my colleagues at Fox 11, you guys in education, we've all had to figure out how to do our jobs in a very, very different sort of way. And so I'm sort of wondering, Dr. K, your district, how would you grade uh, distance learning among your teachers and, and your parents and your children? Uh, well, I appreciate you asking that. I want you to know that every day it gets better. So this is not something that we started out knowing, but I have to tell you today, I, w I would give it an, an A minus. Uh, I, I think there's a lot to learn, but I think people have made a very, you know, the parents, the students, the families, everyone has made an excellent effort. And uh, I just want you to know it could be an A plus tomorrow though. Uh, it, it, it always is something we're learning about. And I want you to know Mrs. Neri and other parents contact me. And every time we find out something that's not working, we, we fix it promptly or we address it. So uh, it's, it is an evolving situation and it's not something that's you know static. It's something that we learn as people experience distance learning. You know, I gotta, I gotta tell you, there's so many things I wanna ask you about uh, with regard to how do you get back to the classroom? What do you do about summer school? I mean, I wanna get down into the weeds a little bit. So let's save some of that for the next segment. Everybody, you're watching Fox 11 News In Depth. We'll be back with our guest. Right after. We're back now with Rialto Unified School Super. Dr. Quatemo Avia, Moreno Valley Superintendent, Dr. Martin Rex Kedziora, a.k.a. Dr. K. I'm going to change your name here, whether I, you like it or not, right? <laughs> Sorry. And then also <laughs> Melissa Neri joining us. And I, I, first of all, Melissa, I want to start with you because I think that I think that uh, the, the big question here is what can people like these two superintendents do to give you as a parent a sense of comfort about sending your kids back to school? Wow, that's a big question there because there's so much that as a parent uh, we want, but if we're gonna get is another thing. Um, important thing is to maintain the hand washing as kids do tend to touch everything and constantly carry germs with them, but maybe um, some type of having to wash our hands constantly, even more so in school. Um, but what about, things, would, what about things like, let me ask you, what, what about things like uh, taking a kid's temperature coming into school? All those sort of things that we have to do now when we go to a doctor's office or we go to some place where they're checking us before we come in. That would take a long process for school to start in the mornings if we were to go back to a school schedule, I would think. Um, we can try that process, but I would see maybe downsizing class sizes so there won't be so much students in a classroom. I would say downsize the classrooms maybe, bringing it back to what it used to be some years ago. Well, Dr. Kedziora, is that a possibility? Can you downsize those classrooms? Well, uh, I believe that what Dr. Avia spoke earlier about was that we have to provide lots of options and choices as we go into this. There'll, there will be different people that have different feelings. And so we have to look at providing a place for students who wanna come to school, but maybe there's students who don't wanna come to school. So that could resolve the uh, volume or the number of students that are there at any given time. 
And uh, so everything, like I said, is a possibility. It's working out the logistics, but it's it's very, you know, everything's possible. We found that in distance learning. So I'm sure as we go back and we address these and look at it, it will take some time, but it can be done. What will you do when a parent calls you and says, I don't feel comfortable sending my, my kid to school? Well, that's an important thing for them to share with us. And we will, just like we are now, uh, we're making sure that if your child needs something, we provide that. And that's why we have to have options in distance learning. And like Dr. Avia said, uh, independent study. Uh, there, We have those systems in place that we do now to support students. And that would, we, we could provide more supports in the future for that. Well, Dr. Avia, let, let's pick up on that. I mean, I call in, I'm a parent, I'm not comfortable sending my kid to school. What, what do you do? Uh, as was mentioned earlier, we can have the opportunity for them to be placed on independent study or to default into a distance learning uh, model. I have a team of 30 people right now who are exploring every possible option uh, that we can conceive uh, for the return of school with respect to uh, having a third, having half the kids uh, return to school physically while the other half remains on independent uh, study or distance learning. We're looking at maybe splitting the, the classrooms. Every classroom for only half the kids will show up uh, on a given day and then finish out the week on distance learning. So we're looking at ways to minimize uh, the number of individuals on campus. We're looking at uh, ways that staff can possibly continue to work from home as they happened for the past uh, month and a half. So we're exploring every option possible to maintain uh, numbers because we're talking about, uh, in many cases, thousands of individuals on any given campus. And we have to be able to scale it down to a size that's not only manageable, but also safe based on the information being provided by the uh, health experts. What, what is the population of your district? It's approximately 26,000. Yeah, so these these are small cities. And, and so you've got a lot to manage to try to, to make sure this population can function. And, and so what about summer school? What about summer so school, summer Dr. Kedzior? Uh, we're looking at that right now. Uh, in special education, students have what they call extended school year, and that will continue, but it won't be done in, uh, physically. It'll be done virtually and distance learning. And we're looking at the same thing for summer learning. And we do know that parents are concerned about the gap and when students went off, uh, when, they went, when the schools were closed. And so we're looking at providing additional resources at the elementary and middle school level to support students through the summer until school opens again. And let, let me have uh, Melissa give us the, the last thought here, because you have a fifth grader and you have a seventh grader and, and, and those kids, they're young. You're, I'm sure you're taking good care of them at home and helping them with distance learning. I got to feel that you're going to be very careful about when you want to send those kids back. Got about 30 seconds. What's your answer? Most definitely. Um, I will be watching on the COVID numbers and seeing if it's safe enough for them to go back. But distant learning is not, a, it is an easy option for me as a parent that is involved. And I see that my kids are running it themselves. So it's not a hard task for them to do. Distant learning is working very well for many parents. All right, good enough. Dr. Quete Moca Villa, Dr. Martin Rex Ketziora, and Melissa Neri, th thank you all very much for sharing some of your time with us today and, and giving us some of this information as we go forward. I know everything with this uh, infection, it changes by the hour. So I know your life is changing by the hour as well. And it's nice that you were able to spend some time with us. Okay, we'll be back right after the break. We're going to talk to some teachers now. Be right back. Welcome back to Fox 11 News In Depth. I'm Hal Eisner, and now we're going to talk to some teachers because today's Education Day on this show. Catherine Valdez, she's a physical education teacher at the Frisbee Middle School in Rialto. Hello to you. And Steve Hill, he's a physical education teacher as well at Pollard High School in the Corona Norco Unified School District. And I know both of you have children, and so you must have an interesting perspective as parents and teachers and going back to school. So let me start with Catherine. First of all, how are you, how are your family? And, 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 and go ahead and answer that question about uh, sort of being a parent and a teacher at the same time while we're dealing with COVID-19. I'm doing good. My, my kids are doing good. Um, 
I have uh, high schoolers at home and one college student that had to come home and do her online classes. But, you know, we're making it work. And 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 you do distance learning. I, I can't imagine exactly how that works with physical education. Do you want to tell us, Catherine, how you do that with your students? Uh, through Google Classroom, I have um, I have them do a log every week. I send them videos from YouTube, and I I just hunt all over the place to give them some kind of ideas on how to stay active. And for the most part, they're logging in and and checking in with me every day. Before I get to Steve, how concerned are you about getting back to school, getting back at the right time? It's a little nerve wracking. Um, I have my own kids. I miss my students, um, but I got to trust in, in my superintendent and his crew to let us know when it's time to go back. So you're, you're, you're relying on the staff and, and the management to make the right decision. Steve, what about you? How are you feeling about all this? How's, how's your family? How are you doing? Uh, we're doing great, making the most of it. Uh, my wife is a teacher also. So the uh, the homeschooling part, I've been kind of lucky. My wife has taken, taken the reins and uh, I'm in charge of burning the kids out, doing the, the physical the physical education part of it. But um, we're holding in and just stay, staying, staying busy, getting all the projects done that I normally procrastinate on. You're right. Except most, like most of us, you know, there's going to be a point, though, it's going to be time to go back to school. And when I say back to school, I mean back into the building. So, Steve, how concerned are you about that? What do you want to see the, the, the administrators do to make sure you feel safe going back into that school? Um, I got to be honest, me, myself, um, I'm just ready for them to tell me to go back. I'll do whatever they say. If it was tomorrow and there, it's the same restrictions we have now. You got to wear face masks and gloves. I, I'll do it. It, it. I'm just. I think it's important that we get the kids back in school, um, getting that interaction with us and with each other. And um, I'm. I'm ready, regardless. Well, right now the schools uh, are empty. They're 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 not what they used to be. Obviously, you created some workout videos for people stuck in quarantine. First of all, let's take a look at one of those on YouTube. Uh oh, so as we're at, locked up at home with this uh, COVID nineteen, I thought um, there's probably a lot of people that are getting bored, a little stir crazy, want to work out, but the hardest thing is getting started. So I'm gonna say make sure you do something that you'll be consistent with so going back to where i started 300 pounds um sorry and, and cheat and try to get as many steps in as i can i see you you throw a little humor in there to make it fun and and you you were telling me that that uh you thought maybe you got sick there for a while back in january february and and so uh, how's the quarantine affected you and your family um i I actually, I do think that we, we got sick. I obviously can't be for sure what it was, but it was you, definitely different. To be different. clear, you think you might have been infected, but with no testing, you couldn't be positive. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I don't know. I, I've heard, heard a lot of people say that um, they're they're having a hard time being quarantined with their family, but I think we have such a good, um, my wife, I should say, my wife has made such a good schedule and we're staying so busy that I'm, I'm enjoying my time with my family. It's uh, very productive and fulfilling, but I do miss my, my students. We, my friend and I made these uh, YouTube videos. We're new with this whole technology thing, but uh, we made these videos to try to connect with the kids because we miss the kids, especially as PE teachers. We get to build relationships with the kids and um, get out there and be active, and I really miss them. So I was hoping that this would kind of Give us some FaceTime. I've had some students actually be, we're calling them guest trainers. Um, the mayor of Corona is making us a guest trainer video, our superintendent did. So we're just trying to connect everybody and hopefully, like you said, throw a little humor in there, but uh, give people some ideas on how to stay sane in such an unprecedented time. Catherine, if any of your students are watching right now, what do you want to say to them? I miss you and I hope you stay active and, and healthy and, you know, drink your water every day. I, I'm here. I'm, I'm an email away. 
And Steve, what do you want to tell your students if any happen to be watching right now? Um, get on to grind with the old line guys and work out with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so keep active and stay busy. Yeah, follow the rules. Definitely. Stay healthy. Yeah. Keep your hands clean. I've been sending and a lot sure, of. And, um, and, I'm go sorry, ahead, Catherine. Um, breathing videos. That was one thing that we were working on uh, with our culture and climate was teaching the kids how to breathe and, and, and self-regulate. So I've been looking a lot into that and sending them a lot of that stuff, too. All right. Catherine Valadez uh, from from uh, the Frisbee Middle School in Rialto. Steve Hill from the Corona Norco District from Pollard High. Thank you both very much. I, I know you're itching to get back to school. I also know that you want it to be at the right time. So uh, we'll, yes. we'll visit with you again and find out when that right time is, how that's going. We'll be back with more after the break. If you haven't already, check out my podcast, What the Hell. It's available wherever you get your podcast and also at whatthehowpodcast.com. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for joining us and hang in there, everyone. We're, we're going to get through this. One more thing to all you mothers out there, including mine. Happy Mother's Day. Here's a little gift from us, a tribute from The Generation Gap, a barbershop quartet still harmonizing through the miracle of technology despite the quarantine.